Potatoes, the third biggest food crop in the world after rice and wheat. Maize is pretty big as well, but that mainly goes into feed and some into biofuels as well. So this is a really, really important staple crop worldwide. About five or six years ago, Dan Crop and Food Research, now Plant and Food Research, got involved in a group called the International Potato Genome Sequencing Consortium. All these years ago, a handful of organizations and a handful of countries. Now, we're ending up with 27 organizations out of 14 countries. And what we set out to do, what we have achieved now as well, is to make a draft genome sequence of potato. So all the A's, the G's, the C's and the T's together in the genome. Determine the sequence of those, determine where the genes are, where the proteins are made, where the switches are that make the genes go on and off, etc. Now this is the potato that we eat. This is purple passion. And I have purple heart, crop 39 and red rascal here as well. So what we worked with is a search line that is a lot simpler. It's a diploid, so it has two copies of everything, but these copies are also identical. So we've pieced together all the bits of DNA from that simple research material that we call the baseline, and then we try and make sense of what is in here, how does that relate with the baseline. What we're trying to achieve is all that DNA sequence, all those A, C, G's and T's and all the different genes that we have there, is to correlate them to what we actually see. What makes a red tuber red and what makes a purple tuber purple? Now these are very simple visual markers and you, you can say, well, I can see the difference between those. That's true. But can you see whether this one has a higher nutritional value than that one or the other way around? That's a lot harder. And so what we're doing is to try and, and um, uh, predict which of these genes in all these different lines are switched on and what they affect. Do they make better nutrition? Do they make disease resistance? And do they make collars or not? So in order to do that, we have actually sequenced a number of, of our own cultivars and we're piecing them together at the moment to see what we can learn from that. What we hope to do in a number of years is to have genetic markers where we can, in the lab, say to the breeder, this is the one you really want if you're breeding for, one that's good for processing, for making chips and crisps. What we'd like to do is to predict what genes are in particular lines. So when we go to the breeding program, we have 30,000 seedlings that we can say, you are the 5,000 ones that you really want to continue with if you want a potato that is good for making chips and crisps. And so we might not speed up the process dramatically, but we'll, we'll increase the efficiency of the program where we're saying, here is a small collection of lines that are really of interest to you because the trait that you're after is actually very well presented in here. And for the visual markers, that's simple, but it's a lot harder for the nutrition, for processing qualities, for disease resistances, traits that are far more complex and that are determined by a number of genes and not just one single switch.